Shout out to our guy Super Duper Kyle because he took out all the guesswork for his game status tomorrow. He said, hey, I'm going to be out there. I'm playing. So we are looking forward to seeing Super Duper Kyle out there on the field. But somebody who it doesn't seem like it's looking too good for, not only for the Steelers game, but maybe even not necessarily a long term thing, but he could be out for a good amount of time. Seems like that is the status with Arthur Millette. We know what Arthur Millette, uh, he sustained some type of injury at practice a couple of days ago. Then he ended up being a walking boot. He's already been declared out of the Steelers game, but Jess Rebick kind of gave us a hint as to what could be on the way for him. So uh, a couple of days ago, Aaron Wilson, he said that the Ravens worked out Kiki Kuti, who's a wide receiver, uh, Eric Gard, Desmond King, who's a cornerback, and Michael Pilardi. So somebody responded to that, and they said, Jeff Rebick is not looking good. For Arthur Millette. And this was Jess Rebick's response. He said, when Harbaugh essentially said today, they have to figure out what they're going to do, that was pretty telling. Because usually Harbaugh, like, if, it ain't, if it's a minor injury or something like that, if it's a short-term thing or something like that, Harbaugh would be like, oh, no, he'll be back. Oh, he'll be, he'll be fine. Oh, he should be practicing next week. Uh, it's, it's a minor thing. He won't be out for the season. He'll say something like that. But if Harbaugh's saying, we got to figure out what to do, then, ooh, anyway, um, then somebody replied to that. They said, to do what exactly? And then Jess Rebick said it made it sound like it was an injury reserve decision. Uh, if he was only going to miss a week or two, there wouldn't be a decision to make. So, yeah, sounds like Arthur Millette is going to be out for a little while. So we'll see what happens with him shortly. Now, um, for the Baltimore Ravens, another player, another defensive back, Eddie Jackson. He has been ruled out of this game against the Steelers tomorrow and they said that he's not even traveling with the team now I'm not gonna get to any assumptions or anything because they did say it's not non-injury related so I'm not gonna assume anything because we've seen it a lot of times when a, a non-injury related something like this happens and a player got some personal matter to deal with with family or whatnot so who knows what it could be but hopefully everything is good uh, with Eddie Jackson personally um, and then when Ravens get back, I'm sure they'll address it or whatnot, and they'll let it be known, whatever it was, whatever it ended up being. Um, but he is out for the game tomorrow. And then they, uh, they called up Christian Welch. So they called up a physical linebacker uh, for this game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So we'll see him in game action tomorrow. Now we reach my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. We're going to jump straight into it. But before we do, let's give a special shout out to our newest team, Keep It Clean Patron. My guy, Be More 31 Now, are those your actual initials for your name? Because if so, you were meant to be a Ravens fan. If that is the case, that's fire. I love it. And we're jumping straight into this question. He says, special teams. What's good in Graven Hope all is well with the family? It's been three years since I sent you a question. I watch you every day. Oh, man. That's a Okay, that's a long time, but welcome back. But I, I appreciate you still watching. He said, uh, going on five years, I believe. But thank you for what you do here on the channel and the community. Uh, no, you, again, you ain't got to thank me. I thank y'all. Y'all deserve all the thanks in the world for what y'all do because y'all come through, y'all show support, y'all show love, and y'all make this fun. He said, um, so I'm trying to get my mind right for this tense and stressful game against these Steelers. Oh, ain't no way to get your mind right for no Steelers game. It's going to be stressful. It's going to be annoying. It's going to just drive us crazy. But as long as we get driven crazy and the Ravens win... Hey, everything is good in the world. Uh, he said, let me tell you a little bit. Uh, some of my family are Steelers fans, and to top it off, my barber is a Steelers fan. Oh, he probably messed your lineup on purpose this week. I know he did. He probably tried to sabotage it. He said, we have to win, but there is one area that Ravens have to be on point. Uh, we have talked all week about the offense and defense, but we haven't talked about one situation that bothers me the most, special teams. Oh, that's such a good point. He said, we're the only team to give up two onside kicks. Missed field goals, missed opportunities on the punt and kickoff team, shall I say any more? The point I am making is that I've seen Steelers play and them boys on special teams bring it. I can see them pulling something out of the hat and turning the momentum around uh, to, to them. These Steelers are passionate on that end, and this is one area I'm worried. The special teams coach for them, I call him Joker. He plays a big part for them. Uh, one thing I must add, Deontay Johnson and Tredavious White and Keith Mitchell will be help for us down the stretch, hopefully in this game. But first, back to your special team stuff. Yeah, that's real right there. And, and that's such a great, great point. Um, now, with special teams, we know Ravens got to get better. We see it with the kicking game. Uh, the punt game, the, the punt's been pretty good. Um, and the, the, them covering the punts and covering the kicks, for the most part, they, they've been pretty good, too. They could get a little better, but overall, they've been pretty good. But it's the, the kicking game is the biggest worry to me. Uh, so we don't want it to come down to that. But we want Justin Tucker to be on point. And, and he, Justin Tucker's going to get on point. So they're going to get all that worked out, all that figured out. But anyway... 
Uh, as far as Tredavious White, yeah, he could be a big help. Keith Mitchell, yeah, he could be a big help too. Just his depth. Uh, th- th- him being quality depth, but him being somebody that ha- has started already. Like, we got three starters at running back. All guys that have started and got plenty of starting experience. All guys that can come in and they can be difference makers and they can change the pace of whatever the Baltimore Ravens are doing. And just they, they have that advantage against the Steelers because they all do different things and they do different things so well. Derrick Henry, Justice Hill, and Keaton Mitchell. Um, as far as Deontay Johnson, yeah, I would expect the Ravens to not necessarily force feed him in this game, but definitely get him involved. Anyway, he said, we must win this game to shut up the Steelers fans. I will give you my prediction. We'll win by four. My score, 28-24. What are your thoughts? I think I would love that. Again, as long as Ravens win. But if Ravens, they want to make this a non-stressful game, beat down the Steelers bad, I don't expect them to beat them down like that. But if they want to do that, go for it. Go for it. Make it personal. Go for it. You got Patrick Queen over there. You got Deshaun Elliott talking reckless. Go for it. You want to really like, Lamar, you... You want to throw six touchdowns in my – go for it. Anyway, uh, he said, what does the Ravens need to do to prevent any downward spiral happening in this game? Consistently play on offense. Do, continue to do what you've been doing on offense, but defense to take full advantage of every single opportunity that gets thrown your way. Uh, he said, hope you and your family have a wonderful weekend. Sorry for the long message. And Ravens for, 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 for life. And he said, a stat line, one more thing that Pittsburgh has, two or three block field goals, one punt return, and almost one kickoff return this season. Ravens, y'all better be on point. Next question came from another team. Keep a clean page my guy, Oscar. He said, Angry Raven, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a little minute. He said, I just realized something. Hit me out on this scenario. I think that we will win a division and actually get the two seed, uh, meaning that we will play the seven seed in a wild card. Look at the remaining schedule. I found one team that I think will still make the playoffs despite having a losing record right now and that's those Cincinnati Bengals Bengals just need to chill they need to just go somewhere don't don't get it to the playoffs don't I'm so tired of the Bengals man I'm so tired of these extremely crazy stressful ga- like these Bengals games are stressful beyond stressful like they and, and both of them just they they end up just coming down to the most craziest crazy so Bengals just stay home Anyway, uh, he said, we will play them a third time this year, and I do not know if we can beat them three times this year. What are your thoughts? Thanks for all you do for this community. Yeah, y'all, y'all ain't got to thank me for nothing, man, but I appreciate you. Um, yeah, like I said, Bengals Bingle, need to stay home. They need to stay home. Ravens can beat them a third time, but Bengals, like, they couple plays away from beating the Ravens in both of those games, too. So it ain't like the Ravens blew out the Bengals. It ain't like the Bengals even this side team. They just been on the, the, the wrong, well, the right side. Of the losing record But um, they just been on the wrong side of a couple of these games A couple literal plays away From their record being totally flip flop But we're glad that it's that way Next question came from another new Team Keep It Clean patron My guy Jammin And see in yesterday's video I had literally Right when I was recording He had became a Team Keep It Clean patron And right when I finished recording Started editing That's when he sent in his question I said oh man I just missed it But we got it Here you go He said hey my guy Engraven He said I finally made it here It feels so good to be a Patreon member No I appreciate you man He said uh, I've been rocking with you since the car videos And I appreciate everything you and your family does For the Team Keep It Clean family Again y'all, y'all ain't gotta thank us man We thank you y'all, y'all be coming through man He said my first question is Do you think the loss of key position coaches is the reason why Roquan Smith and Marcus Williams are not looking the same. Uh, throw Brandon Stevens on there too. Uh, but it's got to be. Like, it's, it's got to be that, right? Because, I mean, defensive co- position coaches, because those are the guys that specifically help you in whatever area you play in uh, on the team. Uh, obviously, the defensive coordinator, that changing. But I, 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 we got to attribute it to that, right? We, I, I feel like we, we have to. Because what else could it be? Did these guys just fall off overnight? No. They're both good players. They're both good players that know how to get their job done. So, so it, it got to be that, right? I, I think. <laughs> anyway, he said, uh, how this new scheme or how this new scheme is being taught has to have something to do with the defensive fall off. Yeah, it does because guys are just – they look out of place. Um, guys are being put in bad positions. To Guys are not always being put in position to have success. Now, sometimes they are put in position to have success, and they just don't sometimes. But there are a lot of other times when it's like, hold on, why are we matching him up with the – oh, hold on, why is he covering – why is he out – and, and it's like, oh, what are we doing? Anyway, um, he also said – Last question, do you see a shakeup at the pass rusher rotation? Maybe seeing some of the younger guys like Adisa Isaac and like the David Ajabo hype train, I'm out. He said, I always wanted to say that. (laughs) 
Yeah, that that uh, oof, oof, eek. I don't see no shake up a pass rusher though, especially with Adisa Isaac. I feel like Adisa Isaac is a uh, a, a safe, um, inactive guy for them. Um, I yeah, I, I just don't see it happening at all. And I mean, who are they gonna shake up the pass rush with? Their pass rushers are Adolfe Away, uh, Kyle Vinoy, David Ajabo, Tavius Robinson. Um, what's the name? Adisa Isaac. He not he not gonna crack that list. Uh, he's the, he's gonna continue to be inactive. These Ravens. Next question came from my guy Mark JG. He said, "What's going on, Engraven? What's going on, Mark?" He said, "It's nice being on the edge of your seat or asking why the Ravens did this or that. Ain't got no stresses, LOL. I seen Lattimore's overall in Madden, and, th and I thought, what could have been shaking my head. But anyway, let's get to the question. Sorry if my points are everywhere. I'm thinking as I'm revising. All right, here we go. Let me get quick. Let me get comfortable for this one. He said, "I'm listening to Marlon and also was thinking about this. He talked about how they have great practices, but it doesn't translate to the game. And we are 34th. In <laughs> that was at 34th in pass defense, um, and that's not a type." Or like F minus. Uh, we got we got you. We got to have to try to be that bad. Shaking my head, but I don't think I've seen Marlon as serious to buckle down and get this right because he took that leadership role and called out effort too. Here's the point: How do we give up all those interceptions in practice and all those pressures? And our defense sounded like they were blazing before the season. And to Marlon's point, they've been having good practices until now uh, to whatever we are putting on the field. Uh, we are practicing against the number one offense in the NFL, so what's the issue? Now, I say everyone is different and you have mismatches, but I expect our defense to be ranked from 10 to 15, something average or decent. Uh, I'll even take 17th. If you're practicing, it's great, and everyone is doing their job in practice. Can you blame Zach Orr? I know all kinds of eyes can be different, but based on what we see, which ain't it, and we're told before the game, uh, that can we blame him? Changes need to be made. I love the youth of Zach, but that might be the issue here as well, and Dean ain't helping. I don't want to see him go, but I want to see change. That sounds like you want to see him go, like, because if he didn't go, whether not even if necessarily talking about fire, even if they moved him somewhere else, that would be him going. That because he would be going to another position. So you want to see him go, and you want some change. But anyway, he said just some quick points. Uh, can we say Travis Jones is the unsung hero of the defense? Yes, we can. We certainly can because he helped take this pass rush to to whoa. He said uh, Travis Jones is um he oh he, he frees up so much. Our Darius needs to stay out there. He's his only bad play I saw was when that late touchdown with him and Nate, but I love his heart. But there's nothing he couldn't could have done. Uh, he was too short. Uh, Kyle breaks that up, but we know what happened. Not blaming him on that one. Uh, he is one of the few who plays 100. percent Yeah, Darius Washington is amazing. He's amazing, and yeah, that I, yeah that is a good point. One of his only bad plays was that when him and Nate were on uh, Jamar Chase um, and Joe Burrow just he put it up there. Jamal Chase went, tiptoe, toe drag, so got it, touchdown. See, so yeah, anyway, he said, I was confident going against Philly, but not anymore. We saw what Chase Brown did, or Jamal Chase did against us. Imagine what Saquon Barkley is going to do. Don't give oh, no, excuse me, Chase Brown, my fault, Chase Brown. Chase Brown was right. He's talking about the running back for the Bengals. He said, don't get me started on AJ and Devontae and the D Dallas Go. Oh, boy, Dallas got it. It's, it's, mm. Anyway, we'll talk about that soon. He said, we got Pitt this week, and as bad as the defense is, we freeze up against Pitt on offense for some reason. Plus, their defense is balling. These games, you need your defense. If they don't show up, it'll get ugly. On the bright side, we got playmakers on offense, and I hope they use Tylen Wallace more and get Deontay some chemistry because I feel like he can help. Uh, just got to get that Lamar trust, and I feel it coming. I think we could all agree on that one. Um, Cause they, again, we just gotta see it happen. We just gotta see it happen. And, and they, ain't, they ain't gonna be no crazy game changing play. If they want it to be, that's fine. But just to get him involved, a little bit here, a little bit there, and whatnot. But it's nice to have him just as another weapon. That's, that's a great thing. So thanks for all you do. Engraving hope Kyle comes back soon, and don't rush it. Cause I'm sorry, Kyle is the best player on defense. But I don't think it matters if he's out there that much. Uh, him or Hump, we have to rely on to make a play. Shaking me, shaking my head. Uh, we need help anyways. Um, yeah, and good thing, because he sent this earlier in the week. He sent this question earlier in the week. Um, but Kyle, yes, he, he is back. So that's great. He said, love you all. Don't stress over life because it's stressful and beautiful all at once. So enjoy your time on earth. I'm out engraving. Take your flowers that people give you because like, like it or not, you're the top Ravens creator. Numbers don't lie and context is everything. Boy, I, I, I see you tried to shut me up before I could shut you down. But sometimes numbers do lie. Sometimes numbers, numbers don't tell the whole story. Context tells, but numbers, no, they don't tell the whole story. But no, I, I appreciate you though, man. Next question came from Eric. He said, how's it going? Been a while since I asked the question, but how would you feel if our Ravens offered Ray Lewis a coaching job? That that wouldn't happen. That they they would never do that. I, I don't think. I don't I just I don't see 
a rate because John Harbaugh, he's a head coach of this team. If he was to hire a Ray Lewis, he could run the risk. And the players obviously love, they love John Harbaugh. They love him. They respect him. But if he was to hire somebody like a Ray Lewis, then he would run the risk. And this happened before. When Ray, when Ray Lewis was a player, this happened. They flocked to Ray Lewis and Ed Reed. And you know, remember the whole mutiny thing or whatnot. So if John Harbaugh was to hire Ray Lewis as a coach, could be positional coach, defensive coach, whatever. If he was to hire him as a coach, he would run the risk of potentially losing the locker room to Ray Lewis. Hobbs ain't doing that. Anyway, uh, he said uh, he was so dominant at the middle linebacker position uh, his entire career. His ability to read plays and players was out of, and his play was out of this world. I feel he could make a difference coaching our defense, and maybe we can get back to that Ravens defense that we know and love. We would love it. It, was, it could be great. Ray Lewis could teach them a lot of different things, and especially with just just how to read. Uh, excuse me, how to watch film alone, especially and then if Ed Reed had a say so. Ooh, but. It ain't never going down. Next question is a little double question here because it came from my guy Darren and my guy TJ. They said, at his speed, what's up, Engraven? I'll keep this one short. The Patriots just released 2022 second round pick, uh, Tyquan Thornton. Let me remind you that he has 4-2 speed clocked at the combine. What are the thoughts of us bringing him in as the deep threat that Tez Walker was supposed to be? I just have this itch for a vertical field stretch and feel like that will make our already unstoppable offense even Crazier. That's what my guy Darren said. And then my guy TJ said, young, blazing, tall, speed receiver, six foot two. Why not? What's the worst that could happen? We signed Dez Bryant when he was clearly not a football player anymore. Just saying, give it a try. So they thinking about the Ravens adding Tyquan Thornton. I wouldn't be mad at it. Couldn't hurt at all. Um, but I think the way that the Ravens will look at it, they say, hold up. We got somebody on our roster already. That's waiting in the wings, that being Tez Walker. Next question came from my guy, Jarvo. He said, I got a hypothetical question for you. If Rodgers don't come back to the Jets next season, he already said he wants to play next season, but things could change. But anyway, he said, would you try to get Adams, talk to Higgins if he become a free agent, or talk to Seattle about DK Metcalf? Well, um, Devontae Adams, um, you, 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 you done burned us once. Um, I ain't like that. Uh, I would, I feel like DK Metcalf, he would be, a great fit with the Ravens offense because he can stretch the field. He's a, a big jump ball receiver, somebody who could Lamar could throw it up. To, and I feel like he would just compliment Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman perfectly, like perfectly. Uh, T. Higgins. T. Higgins is nice, man. I really like T. Higgins as a receiver. It's the injuries, man. That's the thing that I would be scared about is the injuries. Because he always got like a hamstring injury. It's always something going on with T. Higgins. And I, I would just be so worried about that with him. Um, with Devontae Adams, yeah, I, I, I think that, that that's done. 